So today's speaker is John Brooks from InsightSoftware.com. John has worked in the J.D. Edwards world and Enterprise One Arena since 1990. John joined InsightSoftware.com 10 years ago as a director in EMEA and assists customers in Europe to get the most from their investment in Insight Unlimited. So without further ado, John, it's over to you. Thanks, Amy, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to spend about half an hour today talking about integrated planning for J.D. Edwards. It's a mixture of PowerPoint and uh, some live software as well, just to show some examples working. We'll also have some information for you that you can download, uh, research booklets and things like that as well. So uh, hopefully a good mix of information. As Amy said, if you've got any questions, type them into the, the panel at the side and we'll try and answer as many as we can at the end. So let's um, talk about planning. Everybody needs to plan. Every department needs to plan and it's a continuous exercise. Finance need to plan the numbers, sales need to plan the volumes they're going to sell and who they're going to sell it to. Marketing needs to decide what events it's going to attend, what promotions and campaigns it's going to run. IT need to plan hardware, software, consultancy, etc. Every department needs to plan. And those plans are always changing. Throughout the year you'll make an initial plan, then you'll have uh, some forecast updates as, as information comes in, as, as reality changes. You'll then re have to report on that. The reporting is fundamental. There's no point having a decent plan if you can't report on actuals versus the plan later on throughout the year. You'll look at those reports and there'll be an element of replanning. Then later on there'll be reforecasting, and then the cycle will start all over again. So everyone needs to plan. And this is what we want to talk about is how to get all of that data integrated in JD Edwards. So question number one. What tools do you use for different planning activities in different departments today? And please tick as, uh, as many as apply to your organisation as, uh, as you have. Okay, so as John said, um, this is one of our first polling question. Um, so question, which tools do you use for planning today? Answers are JDE, Cognos, Hyperion, Spreadsheets and an in-house bespoke system. So I'll just give you another couple of seconds to um, cast your votes. Okay, they're coming in thick and fast. Okay, and closing the poll now. Thanks everyone, and I'm showing the results. So what we can see, Excel and spreadsheets are clear winner. 96% of people are using spreadsheets. Um, you know, um, in many ways I'm surprised that's not 100%, but uh, very high. A lot of people are trying to keep their budgets and plans in JD Edwards, that's good. You know, we, we believe that data should be kept in JD Edwards wherever possible. A little bit of cognizance on a higher period out there. And um, quite a bit of in-house systems as well. You know, if you look at that, we've got as much in-house systems as uh, Cognos and Hyperion added together. So thank you very much for that. There will be a couple more polls throughout this webinar. But that's useful information to have. So everybody needs to plan, which is probably why you bought an ERP system. The, the P in ERP stands for planning, right? And this is probably how you imagined it would all work, that you'd have a JD Edwards system that would incorporate headcount planning, annual budgets, capital expenditure, depreciation, forecasting, sales, everything would just be integrated. But in reality, it can be very different. People start to do budgets, and they start to do budgets on things like spreadsheets, and 96% you know, of you responded to say spreadsheets were part of your current planning process. But you know, at least sometimes, you, know, you can upload a, a, a spreadsheet or someone re-keys in the summary information. So at least some of that data goes back into JD Edwards to live in a budget ledger. So you've got an Excel process, hard to manage, but at least some data gets back to JD Edwards. Later on throughout the year, people are doing ex extracts to do things like, what are we going to sell? Sales by customer, sales by item, sales by country or branch or product group. And those are typically one-way extracts because there's, it's hard to get that information back into JD Edwards because there's nowhere really to hold it. You know, it doesn't fit the chart of accounts, you can't really hold it anywhere. So typically they're extracts that are having to be continuously done. So people are relying on spreadsheets then to get their data. They can't do an actuals versus forecast report in JD Edwards because not all the data lives there. You've done a lot of offline planning by extracting data. We're also doing the forecast, and that's being done in a spreadsheet. Maybe we're taking out the current actuals from JD Edwards and then emailing it out to people to say, are there any adjustments to make this month or this quarter? How is your forecast going to change? 
And again, people don't want to always update JD Edwards with that. They don't have enough ledgers to hold all of their information, for example, or they've got no mechanism for collating and quality controlling the data that comes back. So again, that data just stays in Excels. And it gets really hard to do your reporting later in the year. Now I want to see what's my actuals versus my budget or actuals versus forecast one, forecast two, forecast three, etc. When that data is all in different spreadsheets from different people. And that's repeated and repeated you know, throughout the year. Every month more Excels appear. Then we look at capital expenditure. You're probably doing that on a spreadsheet now because you can't put, that if you haven't got those items as assets in JD Edwards, you can't put capex or depreciation against them. So you hope to have a, an upload back into JD Edwards, but there's a problem with it. It's never really worked. And the person who wrote the Excel has now left the company and no one can figure it out. So what happens is you just leave it in Excel and the data never gets back into Edwards. And as the final example, headcount. Well, the, the HR department, the payroll department, they're just doing their planning offline and no one's ever updating the central system. And that's a real problem because there's no link to that data at all, but it's valuable information to have. You have to have that cost to be able to work out what's your total P&L, for example. So that's the reality of most people's JD Edwards systems. It's a variety of offline access databases, Excel spreadsheets, one-way extracts, things that don't upload, things where no one to store them. And that's what you get from your, your planning system if you have a look at them in total. So what I want to talk to you about is three key concepts and show you an example of each in live software. The first concept is don't break the link. The second one is manage Excel. And the third one is collaboration. So let's talk about don't break the link. When you've got an ERP system like JD Edwards, you want to keep an, as much data in there as possible and leverage that system. If you're taking data out, you've got data that's instantly out of date. You know, if you've got a spreadsheet, you, uh, you know, that spreadsheet was only accurate as of the moment it was downloaded. You've got no data validation. You can't do things like drill down to the transactions unless you've downloaded the whole transaction database. So whether this is a spreadsheet or a, a data warehouse, you've got a massive problem if you've taken part of your JD Edwards data into another system because it's never a live update. You've never got all the details. You can't drill down. You've probably broken the link to security as well. That means people can see data in a spreadsheet or in the BI system that they couldn't see in JD Edwards. So breaking that link has all kinds of consequences. It's slow, it's inefficient, has security problems, and it's out of date, stale information. The second concept, managing Excel. Managing Excel, it's a lot like herding cats. It's really hard to control. Let's take the example of uh, timesheets. We've got a, a customer who has to send timesheets out to all of its, its uh, specialists in the field. And it waits every month for those timesheets to come back in. So that means every month they're getting 40 timesheets in. Those timesheets then have to be collated. They have to uh, be tied up with um, customer records so invoices can be sent out. And by the end of the year, you've got 480 spreadsheets have been accumulated just from the monthly timesheet process. That's yeah, really hard then if somebody says, I need to check all of the, uh, all of the work done for a certain customer because you might have data spread across 480 different spreadsheets. Wouldn't it be great if that data had a home to live in in JD Edwards? And in the planning process as well, where you're asking for input from people from different departments, different territories, people in finance, people in operations, people in the field. If you're having to send out Excels all the time, you've got problems with version control. People sending back the wrong version of the spreadsheet, people adding in columns or not completing all the data they should have or entering data that's not valid because Excel doesn't know, for instance, what is a valid business unit or a valid item number. So what we want to do is we want to use Excel for what it's good at. We want to use Excel for its calculation abilities, be able to have data models that can be used in our planning process, but don't use it as a database. We shouldn't be storing data in, in Excel. We just want to use it for what it's good at, modeling and, and calculations. We don't want to use it as having hundreds of little databases out there. And the third concept is collaboration. And this is absolutely key. We've got all of these planning processes going on because everybody has a number to contribute. 
And it's not until you get all those numbers back that you can see the real picture of what's going on. So this jigsaw puzzle, it's made up of data from marketing and HR and IT and sales and finance. You need all of those pieces back in one place before you can really say you've got a single version of the truth, a single source of your data. So being able to collaborate both on an individual uh, planning process, maybe within one department, but then have all the departments collaborate in producing, say, the final budget is very important. And it can only be done by concepts like don't break the link and managing Excel. So question number two, if you could all vote on this, this is what are your biggest planning headaches? And again, please tick all that apply. Yeah, that's right, John. So um, options are broken link to JD Edwards, help I live in a world of spreadsheet madness, lack of collaboration between users, infrastructure cost and resources, and length of planning cycles. And as John said, this is a multiple answer question. Okay, a couple more seconds to collect those answers. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, and closing that now. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. So the, the biggest one here, length of planning cycles. Absolutely, it, it's one that we're going to talk about in, in a moment. It's, it's something we hear both from analysts, both from our customers, prospects. It's, it takes too long to do things like annual budgeting cycles. And this is why many companies are looking at moving to continuous rolling budgets rather than annual process. But think about how you can reduce the length of your planning cycles by having data all controlled in one place, not having to manage all of those spreadsheets out there, by having live access to all of your data from JD Edwards and your planning system integrated together. So if we can reduce the length of planning cycles and, re and control spreadsheets, that's the top two problems mm -hmm. from that poll. And then lack of collaboration, absolutely. You know, if you've got data in spreadsheets or in a data warehouse that's not linked to JD Edwards, other people can't see it, they can't use it, they can't refer to it, they can't make decisions based on it. It slows down the whole decision making process in the, in the business. So thank you very much for those, those, uh, those votes. So what's different with Insights? Well, what we've done is we've developed a system where you can get rid of all of those different spreadsheets and all those different databases and bring them all together into JD Edwards. So you actually get that integrated planning system that you, you've always wanted. And we're going to show a couple of these uh, as examples. So well, we're going to show some live software. An example of not breaking the link. We're going to use a real life example. We've got the end of year forecast. I'm going to go across to, to Insights and I'm going to go into my end of year forecast screen. So what I've got here is a very easy to use screen for the user. And what we've got is we're in the fourth quarter of the year and we need to just forecast the last three months. So here I've got a hierarchical structure. I can see I've got my business unit, Denver, and I've got some data I need to, um, some information I can enter for revenues, for cost of sales, advertising, overheads, etc. And what I've actually got on the screen is nine months of actuals data. So this is coming live from JD Edwards. I can't change these numbers because they're the actual numbers. They're, they're re reality. What I'm going to be able to change are these columns here, October, November, and December, which will then add up and give me a total for quarter four and a total for the year. That total for the year will include nine months of actuals numbers and three months of forecast numbers. So here I can go in and say, well, product A revenues, instead of being 2.1 million, I actually think they're going to be better than that. I'm going to say they're two and a half million. So as soon as I say, yes, we're going to finish that, these totals at the end are going to be updated and I've got a new total for the year. I've got the, my original budget and I've got a variance on there as well. And I've also got the ability to put in explanations about why things are going to be, uh, why I'm going to have a variance or um, comments that my manager can look at when he's approving my budget. So your know, workflow and approvals are very important in all of this. But we've also got the ability at any point to drill down and and see where the data came from. Maybe I want to have a look at what were those transactions behind those amounts in different months, or what were the budgets last year, or how were sales performing last year. So being in live data, but not breaking the link to JD Edwards gives me the ability to do things like live JD Edwards data, 
live drill down to transactions, adding on explanations, and have it all on one screen. So rather than just say to someone on a spreadsheet, what's your forecast for the last few months, we're doing it in one live integrated planning screen. So the next concept, managing Excel. So here's an example from real life. We're going to ask people to enter how much they're going to sell. So this is typically a planning function where you're saying to the sales teams in different locations, different offices, you know, what are you going to sell next year? Now, somebody else has already made the assumptions for us on, on the prices. So we just need to know the quantities, how much are people going to sell you know, month by month. So we're going to go back into live software. And at the bottom of the screen, I've just got a, a tab. Um, so I can have multiple planning screens open. And this one is sales volume entry by month. And again, I've got my different business units and um, I've got different products that we're going to um, ask people to enter budgets for. So I'm going to go into budget entry mode and you can see the sales that have turned yellow are the ones it's asking me to complete. So it's not asking me to say what the revenues are going to be. What we're going to have is actually a model that was created in the spreadsheet. The model is going to calculate that for us without the user ever, ever having to see that detail or know what's happening. And what's the benefit of this? Well, it means you can have all the power of Excel for calculations, but not have to worry about sending the Excel out to people or are they using the right version? Because they're using a centrally held copy of the Excel that's been uploaded into Insight. So let's do a couple of things here. Let's, um, let's say in January, we're not gonna sell 3,000 in January, we're actually gonna sell 4,000 of these in January. In February, we think we're actually going to sell 4,500. And in March, we're actually going to go up to 5,000 units we're going to sell. So what I'm going to do now is just press this button up here that says apply and finish the model. So it's going to take the data, it's going to save the data, it's going to export the data into the model, and then it's automatically going to come back and recalculate it. So what I've got here is it's, it's updated now. The revenues are going to be generated by those increased sales. And those are going to tie in directly to a PL. That's now a live data update that um, you know, can go through the workflow approval process. But I haven't sent out a spreadsheet to someone. I haven't given them any ability to enter data for the wrong products or the wrong business units. I've completely controlled what they're entering data for and uh, which months, which years, which products, etc., by controlling what we call the scope of the uh, of the budget so what we've got is an embedded excel all the power of excel none of the hassles of managing it so it just eliminates that spreadsheet madness the third concept we talked about was collaboration and the real life example we're going to use here is payroll and headcount planning so this is something that even if you're not using jd edwards for for payroll and hr you're still paying your employees you're still doing your planning somewhere and that data needs to get onto some, some reports to get a complete picture of your budget. So let's, let's have a look at a couple of different um, examples. The first one I'm going to do here is to have a look at a P&L. I've got my profit and loss here, and uh, let's pick Denver as an example, business unit 302. And what I've got here is I've got no, nothing coming in for wages and salaries. You'll see that whole row is zero um, for the whole year. So what we need to do now is go and plan my um, my head count and my payroll data. So I'm going to go to the second tab at the bottom of the screen and this is going to show me I'm going to show two different things on this one screen. The first one is what's happening with our existing employees. So this is bringing through live JD Edwards data. I'm going to go into budget mode and I can see these are live address book numbers which I can update if I want to but I'm bringing through here's all my employees and what I'm going to do I'm going to put in into this column here the merit increases are going to have in the payroll system for this year. So I'm actually going to say, well, actually, no, Jeanette, no, she's not going to get 6%. I'm going to give her 5%. Um, I'm going to give Carol 3.5%. Um, I'm actually going to give uh, Ray a little bit more, 4.5%. Um, but I've got some really bad news for, for Josephine because at the end of September, we're going to, you know, she's going to be leaving. So I'm going to put in a termination date, at which point her salary is obviously good. We want to model that as coming out of the, the salary bill. So these are changes to the payroll. One person's leaving, we need to set up an account. 
but that's for the existing employees. Now what I'm going to do is just go across to the other side of the screen where I've got information about new hires. So these are the people we need to add to the business. And you can see here I've got some accounting analysts at different levels I need to hire. Um, they're in different business units. I've got a, um, a, a temporary clerk. I've got a, a security guard. But maybe what I want to do is now just add a new person I need to hire. So I need to hire a marketing executive. And this marketing executive is going to be in the the uh, Denver branch, so that's 302. If I entered an invalid business unit, it would turn red it, it, because it knows how to validate that in JD Edwards. I can say when this person is going to start, I can put a date in, and how much you're going to be going to be paid. So I'm going to say uh, my marketing person is going to be paid $60,000 a year. And on top of that, because of the benefits um, enjoyed by that position, there's going to be a 25% burden rate. So what's going to happen is I'm now just going to apply the model again. It's going to save my data and it's going to recalculate my payroll bill, both for the updates I've made to my actual employees and also my planned hires that I've got coming in. So the figures I've got are going to be changing. So it's now 1.55 um, million. So what's going to happen if I go back to my my PL screen. So you remember earlier we showed that this has got um this has actually got no uh, information there from wages and salary. So what I can do is is I can just say now I want to apply the model. And this shows collaboration. It shows that the HR department have done their work, they put in some some salary information, and what's going to happen is that data can now be brought in from the payroll model into our profit and loss. So we can see there's all the information that's coming now from the payroll department for the first three months of the year has been brought in. It knows about the new hires we're adding, it knows about the pay increases, it knows about anyone who's leaving. So what before might have been an offline process in the spreadsheet is now fully integrated. We've got collaboration between departments. The, the, the work that the payroll department has done is now um, visible and accessible to people doing a full P&L. Maybe it's a business unit manager wants to see what their PL will be for the forthcoming year based on the information they've given payroll. So I can see that information has come through, it's had a, um, an effect. I can see what's my uh, profit and loss by department. So I can just say when I'm, when I'm ready, I'll just finish that. Now, I could obviously put a comment on there as part of our budgeting process. You then get an opportunity to accept or reject that at management level. And if it's a financial budget, then this was a financial budget, it's taken input from HR to update the financial budget but that could now be uploaded to JD Edwards so we'd actually have an upload to the FO902Z1 table so we're going through the approved um, route of actually updating the JD financial budget based on the HR and payroll plan so that's examples that was live data examples of the three concepts don't break the link manage Excel and collaboration so let's go and just talk about uh, about how you get all of this, how this can actually work for you. Well, Insight is well known for reporting and uh, they've got a lot of customers also using it for integrated planning. But Insight as a system, it doesn't need additional hardware. There's zero additional infrastructure. You don't have to buy a server and a data warehouse. You don't have to buy an ETL tool. You don't have to have all of the hassle of that extra hardware. So if you've got a system that can bring together integrated budgeting and planning for JD Edwards, on a system with zero infrastructure, it helps deliver two real goals. The first thing it gives you is, is speed, the fastest speed possible, and that's both to get the system Im implemented. You know, you're not talking weeks or months to put in new hardware, new databases. Uh, not talking weeks or months to put in the um, the, the activities, the, the the cycles, the models, the screens. They're built through Insight, which is is very quick to do all of that. So it's also very fast for the actual budget cycles themselves because people are playing with integrated data, integrated forms, they can collaborate, you know, haven't got the spreadsheet madness. So you've got speed at all aspects of uh, implementing a planning system. It also gives you the lowest total cost of ownership. You know, you're saving time both in IT for the end users, any of the budget contributors. You're also saving a lot of money on not having it to have extra hardware maybe not having to have a new Hyperion administrator to run the system for you. 
um, not having to uh, manage that stuff on a daily basis. So what we've done is we've actually uh, taken our, our golden rules um, around inside. You know, it has to be intuitive. It has to be really fast. It has to be real time. You know, no, no old data, no data warehouse. And it has to use your JDA for security. And we've expanded our system to include full integrated planning that adheres to those golden rules. And we think that's really important. We're seeing a lot of research, a lot of studies going on now about how planning is too slow. Yeah, this is a, a report, but happy to send you the link later on, from PwC about how systems need to be able to allow planning to be done in days and weeks if you're going to have more informed decision making. And it's what we totally agree on. How can you have a system that takes days or weeks when it takes you a, a year to install it? So we're, we're trying to completely break the mold on, on integrated planning systems. There's also a plural report available. So understanding the, the, the real costs and benefits of budgeting and planning solutions. And they're actually looking at what you have to spend both in software, hardware, tools, time taken, internal cost, consultant cost. So again, this is something that um, we can send you, the, you know, we've got the link on the screen, we can send you the link afterwards if, um, along with the recording of this, uh, this webinar. And a couple of the highlights from the, the Blue report implementation time to go live on Insight and Limited Planning. It was just over a month. Excel was nearly three times longer than Insight. Cognos and Hyperion both six or more times longer. And I don't think those results would, would surprise anybody. You know, the, uh, you know, the, the typical six, 12, 18 months or more to implement a, a data warehouse based planning system, they're, they're, they're common in many businesses but still aren't, don't give you the results you want. You still don't have that integration. You basically have a system that accepts a one-way data dump from JD Edwards despite all that cost and time and effort. And if we looked on the, 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 the blue figures on total cost of ownership over five years, Insight again comes out the clear winner. You know, I think surprising one there is for many people is the cost of Excel. Once you factor in the wasted employee time, the amount of rework that has to be done the errors that are caused by having spreadsheets, then Insight is a clear winner for TCO. And uh, this is one more example. This was um, one that we, we, were, we were reading. It was a bit of a car crash of an article. Um, if you are uh, um, the, uh, the Oracle Applications User Group, uh, come out with a regular newsletter. And uh, this is the one from last summer. And it was a seven page um, article on a day in the life of an Oracle Hyperion planning administrator and the reason I say it was a bit of a car crash it was full of terms like well don't forget to do your disk defragmentations and and don't forget to run tips and little commands like this you know if you add a new data item into your ERP system this is the command you'll have to run in in Hyperion to add it into the system and if you don't add it in then either your reports won't load and the system will be unavailable the next day or they'll just have the wrong data the reports will say missing all over them and it, it just looks like something from the 1980s so it was a uh, if you want to have a we've got a link to that article have a read and um, you'll see you know why you have to employ a bunch of um, administrators if you want to implement that technology that's going to really inc increase your total cost of ownership so we're in sitesoftware.com yeah we specialize in, in JD Edwards We've got over 750 uh, JDA sites around the world. And the last question we've got for you is, would you like to find out more about how Insight Limited Planning could work for you? Okay, and um, it's yes, no responses this time, obviously. Waiting for those responses to come in. Okay, lovely. And closing the results now. And sharing those. Okay, so um, quite a positive uh, reaction there. So 72% um, would like to know more. I think that's that's really good from a, you know, a, a quick introduction. You know, we've shown some concepts there. Um, I, I think there's uh, all kinds of planning applications. You know, we've just shown three today. There's all kinds of planning applications that can be handled with Insight Planning. And uh, we'd be delighted to go over some more information with you at your convenience. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Yes. Thank you, John. And before we um, finish, we've got some questions that um, have come in. Okay, so first question 
Um, how easy is it to add tables to work with? Yeah, um, that, that's a pretty good question actually. So the we're actually creating tables that uh, become integrated into Insight and JD Edwards. We have a six-step process to create those tables, um, defining those tables, using data dictionary items, um, and then uh, just uh, creating the, the definitions in Insight. So the nice thing about using data dictionary items is suddenly Insight and JD Edwards automatically know about things like validation rules, help windows. So it, it, it takes just a few minutes to create one um, which you know it means you don't have to ever create you know, those spreadsheets and things. You know, you're creating a table once rather than creating a spreadsheet, say, many times. So it's quite a quick minutes. Okay, lovely. Goodness, we're seeing quite a few um, answers, questions, sorry, coming in. So um, let's see how we can get through. Um, can you upload straight back into JD Edwards? Once your data gets back into the the chart of accounts, so for instance, the the payroll example I had there, the actual payroll data that we're inputting on was on a um, an insight table, but we were then using that via a model to get back into the chart of accounts so we can actually say which accounts should be updated with the results from the payroll plan. So as soon as things are back in that, that chart of accounts type structure, they can be uploaded, absolutely. Okay, lovely. Um, can you have multiple users at the same time? Yes, I mean the system is designed to allow users to, to collaborate so you, you decide uh, which users are involved in a process, you can assign a different scope to each user. So, for example, you can have one user whose responsibility is putting in the revenues, another one, the cost of sales, another one is putting in the overheads. So, for the different users, different parts of their screens become capable, but absolutely, multiple users can work at the same time. Okay. How does version control work if you want to look at the original budget versus the working one? That's a great question. Um, we, we have the ability in Insight to create as many ledgers as we want to. So that means we can, for example, we could have the initial cut of the budget could be one ledger um, that doesn't have to go to JD Edwards. We could then have a, an update of the budget. Maybe that's the one that gets tweaked and approved. Maybe that one becomes your one you upload into BA. But then your forecast can just be more ledgers. Now, if you, if you know Insight, you know it's very easy to do things like actual versus budget. Uh, just by typing in AA, comma, BA, comma, variance. And you can do that with all of the ledgers, whether they're real JD Edwards ledgers or Insight pre-ledgers. So be able to, you, by the end of the year, you'll be able to compare actuals, budgets, quarter one forecast, quarter two forecast, quarter three forecast, etc. You'll be able to compare any of those to each other. Okay, lovely. Thanks, John. And I think, um, I think Connie's question relates to the demo that we were showing. So what is the version or report is all coming from? All right. Well, this has been a sneaky peek of the Insight 2014 version that is coming out in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, we, we've had a, a successful beta program over the last couple of months. And it's, uh, the final build has been created. It's now uh, just going through its final release checks before being released. So that was Insight 2014.1. Okay, I think we're just about out of time now actually, I can see there's more questions that have come in, um, believe me we'll get back to you and with those responses. Um, so I think that's about it now for today's webinar, thank you very much to our presenter John Brooks and of course thank you very much to everyone that's joined us today, we'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks everyone, bye. Bye bye.